Good morning. Let's see. Mike, Mike, Mike. Check, check, check. Looks like it's working. Should be able to see me. Looks like upload is a go. We're not really dropping any frames, so that's good. Sweet. No technical difficulties this time. Perfect. Best thing I ever did was split up my gaming stream in OBS and my Bible stream in Streamlabs OBS. That has saved me a lot of heartache. <clears throat> Anyways, I digress. Uh, nice to see you here, Angel. Is it Angel or do you pronounce it differently? Let me know in the chat. There's a slight delay like a minute delay or so. Man, we, we have some good stuff today. Whether you're joining today or you're watching the archive later, this might be my favorite, uh, my favorite, well, I don't know. Verbs in, in general are just my favorite. Oh, no delay? Perfect, great. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm a gamer, so I um, my gamer tag on Xbox is Phonavone, which is Greek for one who slays, which is a, a, a hat tip to uh, the Halo game type Slayer. Uh, so the other way to translate Phonavone is Slayer, but um, yeah, uh, Halo got me into gaming back in college, and uh, I love it. And then I started streaming really... Um, Really in December. Um, I've been streaming off and on with video games for a long time, but um, started, started doing it really seriously in December. So not that long. But uh, yeah, and so if you... I usually do that Tuesday nights and Thursday nights, 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Pacific, give or take, and then uh, Saturdays. But... Uh, Saturdays and Sundays, but uh, lately, because of work, I haven't been able to do it on Saturdays. I've been doing it on Fridays. Same reason why I'm doing today's Greek lecture today rather than tomorrow, because I started doing it on Saturdays. So, you know, work work got in the way a little bit, and I had to be a little flexible. But, uh, yeah, um, this content today, verbs in general are my favorite, but... Um, this is, today's probably my most favorite because the, I have a specific mnemonic device that helped me learn. I inherited it from my Greek professor in undergraduate school. And he had co-developed it with, I think, his roommate or classmate or something when he was in seminary years ago. And it's really helpful. It's a fun way of learning the contract rules, which... Could be tedious, but if you learn it this way, it makes it really helpful. So I'm excited to share it uh, and put it out there for other people to learn and, and adopt and adapt, maybe even improve, you know? Um, not to say it's perfect, but there could be some really good ideas out there. So I'm excited about it. So today's all about contract verbs. And uh, if you haven't gotten a good grasp on present active indicative go back and review you don't have to do it right now of course but make sure as we go don't just plow forward you also need to look back and re review on your own because so many of these concepts build on each other from here on out and you need to have that firm foundation Otherwise, the rest of your proverbial house will not stand, right? Um, Greek and Hebrew simultaneously, you can do it. I wouldn't recommend it, just like I wouldn't recommend learning Spanish and German at the same time. But you could theoretically do it. Um, now, I'm going to be teaching Hebrew in the same format this time next year. So if you want to wait till then, we can go through that together. Um, and that's the extent of my languages. I, I learned Spanish in high school, but learned Spanish not very well. And um, uh, enough to where I could work with it anyways. 
And then when I went off to college, I learned Greek, and then I learned Hebrew. Then I reinforced that in seminary, um, took the exact same material in Greek, and then slightly different material in Hebrew, but ultimately it's the same stuff, right? And then um, after I finished my master's degree, I started working on German to prepare for my doctorate degree, and then I ended up just not pursuing my doctorate. So, um, But German was pretty easy. It's very similar to Greek. Uh, they're both case-ending systems, which really helped. So uh, learn, learn one or the other for now. That's what I would recommend. And if you want to wait until next year, I'm going to follow the same format to teach Hebrew. Um, Zondervan has a counterpart Hebrew series, um, Basics of Biblical Hebrew by Pratico and someone else. I, I can't remember. I have it back there. Um, but we'll, we'll be getting into that come January 2020. So for now, it's about contract verbs. Again, make sure you've got a good grasp on the um, present active indicative because the contract verbs use the same endings as the present active indicative. Again, it builds on each other. So, yep. what are contract verbs? They are verbs whose stems end in alpha, epsilon, or omicron. Now, remember, the stem is not the root. The stem is the basic form of the verb in that particular tense. This is the present tense stem that we're working with. Later, we'll get into different stems. For now, we're just working on present tense stem. The present tense stem where uh, the stem ends in alpha, epsilon, or omicron, these will contract. They are contract verbs, and they're referred to by their vowel. Alpha contract, epsilon contract, omicron contract. Now, we've seen con contractions before. This is not new. Uh, they, we've seen them with, with nouns. But uh, we're going to see them a lot now with these particular verbs. It's critical for understanding the, the verb because uh, you have to be able to trace down the lexical form of the, of the verb and then look it up in the lexicon or your dictionary. You can't do that if you're not privy to how contracts work. Now, a contraction, to remind you, is simply two vowels joining together to form a diphthong. It's two vowels joining together to form a diphthong. Um, but there are a few contract rules for three vowels, so keep that in mind too. Whoa, hey, what just happened? All right, let's fix this. You can hear me now, though, right? I think iCloud might be having an outage. I got signed out, and now I can't sign in. Um... Let me 
me relaunch this. Okay, that's good. This is this is promising. Hey, -oh! all right. Loot will start up now. There we go. So again, a contract verb. It's stem. It's present tense stem ends in alpha, epsilon, or omicron. They're referred to by that vowel. It's an alpha contract, epsilon contract, omicron contract. Usually it's two vowels joining together to form a diphthong, but it can occur with three vowels as well. There are three classes, so that's how we refer to it. Alpha contract, epsilon contract, omicron, omicron contract. It only occurs in the present tense and the imperfect Tense stems, because those are the stems that retain the, the alpha, epsilon, or omicron at the end. And then have a uh, connecting vowel. Okay? So it only occurs in these two tenses. This is my helpful mnemonic device. To understand the rules, all you got to do is assign a value to each of the um, vowels. Alpha, we're gonna call that a fish. Epsilon, it's like a crab, right? Omicron, it just looks like a bomb. Eta, it looks like a crab with a claw, right? And then omega, well, it just looks like a dead fish, okay? So check this out. You take epsilon, plus Omicron, that becomes Omicron Epsilon. Well, if you take a crab and combine it with a bomb, you get, ooh, what a mess. You take two bombs, one bomb plus a bomb, ooh, what a mess. You take a crab and another crab, well, one crab eventually gets stuck on a hook, Epsilon Yoda. You take, uh, a fish, alpha, plus a bomb, and that becomes a dead fish. You take any uh, vowel, alpha, epsilon, or, or omicron, add it to a dead fish, and that's always going to give you another dead fish. You take uh, a fish, alpha, and a crab, epsilon, and that gives you a really big fish. You take epsilon, a crab, and it eats a fish, and that gives you a crab with a claw. So that is the big mnemonic device. We're using fish, crab, bomb, and crab with a claw, and dead fish to correlate and create these helpful learning tools, right? Um, ooh, what a mess, ooh, what a mess, crab stuck on a hook, a dead fish, dead fish, a really big fish, and a crab with a claw. Now, there's also the, the three here, and the order doesn't matter. Omicron, Epsilon, Yoda. So it could be Omicron, Yoda, well, no, that wouldn't work. Yeah, Omicron, Yoda, Epsilon, Epsilon, Omicron, Yoda, anything like that. It's just going to become E at the end, Omicron Yoda. The, uh, the Epsilon will drop out. But again, the order doesn't matter. I don't have a good mnemonic device. If you can come up with one, I'd love to hear it. Uh, but if you see Omicron Epsilon Yoda, just know it's going to become Omicron Yoda. Order doesn't matter. So any questions on this so far? This, I mean, it's, it's, I, I understand it's still fresh. 
and raw raw fish that's a bad sushi pun uh but um i found it helpful now if you don't find it helpful then just learn the rules that mounts has in the book but if you do find it helpful you could write it out draw it up on a poster whoop, draw it up on a poster put it up on some wallpaper on your phone or on your uh on your computer do something creative with it so that it can really stick Let me know if you want to go back to it at all. Uh, when the contract vowel is the same as the first vowel in the diphthong, the contract vowel falls off. When the contract vowel is the same, so you've got alpha, epsilon, or omicron, as the first vowel in the diphthong, the contract vowel falls off. So if you have epsilon as the contract vowel, but then the, uh, the, the case ending with the connecting vowel are already a diphthong, then the contract vowel simply just <laughs> gone. How would you pronounce or read it? Um, so u U, E, O, O, E, O. Let's see. Um, so the o omegas are pronounced O. And then the al uh, alpha at the bottom is just A. Ah, or, yeah, A, ah, alpha. And then the eta on the right is E. And then the omicron iota is E. It's the same sound. Now keep in mind, not everyone pronounces these the same way. So people using the made-up Erasmian pronunciation, which is very common in seminaries, would be oo I think they pronounce that A instead of E. Uh, they pronounce the omega O. Um, they might say alpha, A, instead of alpha, A. They would say A instead of Eta, E, they would say A, Eta. And then instead of Omicron, Yoda being E, the Rasmian pronounces it Oi. Now they do it to provide different sounds for every vowel and every diphthong. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get into some word examples. Uh, but um, modern Greek isn't pronounced that way. And I did not learn Erasmian. So I'm going to teach you the way I learned it. And I'll call out the Erasmian sometimes. But it doesn't really matter. Um, what's more important is sight recognition. And um, as long as you can have a relatively close pronunciation, it doesn't really matter to be quite honest. We're not learning to speak it fluently. We're learning to read it with, with helpful tools, what I call a working knowledge. We'll get into some word examples um, in a moment. We're gonna go over a few more rules here. Like I said, the contract vowels will fall off when the connecting vowel and the case ending is already a diphthong. So the contract vowel just drops out. Now when the contract vowel is different, uh, yeah, so, sorry. When the contract vowel is the same as the first vowel in the diphthong from the connecting vowel and the case ending. Oh, I gotta get my food, I'll be right back. Don't wanna burn that house down. All right, I'm back. It's a, uh, it's like a corn dog, but it's French toast wrapped around sausage. Oh, it's so good. Anyways, 
So when the contract vowel is the same as the next vowel uh, at the beginning of the diphthong, the contract vowel will fall off. When the contract vowel is different than the first vowel in the diphthong, they will contract. And then the second vowel in the diphthong either falls off or it subscripts. So in here, uh, in this example, you see alpha is the, co the contract vowel followed by epsilon, iota, okay? So we take the first two and those will contract, okay? And so we know that a fish plus a crab is a really big fish. So we end up with alpha plus the yoda. The yoda subscripts where it can, right, with long vowels. So there we go, it subscripts with the alpha. In the next example, epsilon is the contract, omicron is the connecting, epsilon is the case ending, well, it's the diphthong for like the genitive. Or I'm sorry, not the genitive, the... Um... Oh, what is this one? Oh, I can't remember, we'll look at it later. Um, the epsilon plus omega, so we have a crab plus a bomb is what? Ooh, what a mess. So we're left with Omicron Epsilon. Well, now that leaves us with two Epsilons. So the last Epsilon just drops out, and we're left with ooh. Okay, let's look at, at some examples here. This is an alpha contract. You will not find agapo in the lexicon. You will find agapao. They do that so that uh, you can see the contract vowel, but that's not the form of the verb. The first person singular, yes, exactly, the epsilon cancels itself out, it drops out. Or another way to say it is it cancels itself out, yeah. So you will, you will find in the dictionary agapao, but in the New Testament you will not find it. Because first person singular, the alpha and the omega contract. So agapao, uh, the contract is alpha. The connecting vowel here is omicron, which is the same thing we saw with the present active indicative with a non-contract verb. Why? Because the, the case ending in the first person singular is nothing. So when there's nothing, it uses the omicron connecting vowel, and then it lengthens to compensate and becomes omega. So then you take the alpha plus the omega, that means a fish plus a dead fish is a dead fish. So we're left with a dead fish, agapo. The longest time, I used to tell my wife when we were engaged in stuff, I had this wrong, and I would say, se agapao. I thought I was saying, you I love, or I love you. Um, I wasn't saying that, <laughs> uh, because there is no word agapao. It has to contract. I was mistaken in, in how I understood uh, the first person singular. The first person singular still has contraction. It is agapo, where the alpha and the omega contract. We see it again in agapas. Alpha is the contract uh, vowel, and then um, the second person singular is epsilon, yoda, sigma, right? Epsilon, yoda, sigma. Epsilon is the connecting vowel because it's not uh, following or, or it's not... Um, it's not followed by me, ni, or nothing. Okay, that's the rule. It uses epsilon as the connecting vowel when the case ending, or not case ending, the personal ending, is um, not beginning with me, ni, or nothing. Okay? So that leaves us with three vowels. Alpha, epsilon, yoda. Okay? So... Uh, we have to use that on that last page we saw with our rules. 
alpha plus epsilon, a, a fish plus a crab is a really big fish, alpha, and then the Yoda subscripts. It subscripts, and then it's followed by the sigma, a final sigma, because the second person singular, it does end in Yoda sigma, right? So here we have Yoda sigma. It's just the Yoda subscripted, okay? So that's how we ended up with agapas. Agapas. Uh, I believe so, yes. Aga, agapao, which is the lexical form of the word, is the most common word for love in the New Testament. It's not the only word, but it's the most common one. So agapa, now this is the third person singular, present active indicative from agapao, meaning he, she, it loves. The connecting vowel is epsilon because it's not followed by a personal ending that begins with me, me, or, or nothing, okay? So again, we see the same uh, vowels, alpha, epsilon, yoda. And to repeat it, almost like, a, you know, we're beating a dead horse here. Alpha plus epsilon, a fish plus a crab is a really big fish, alpha. And then the yoda subscripts underneath it, agapa. Now we have agapomen. Agapomen. Um, here we have the connecting vowel, omicron, because what follows is a me. So when the personal ending begins with me, ni, or nothing, then we use omicron as the connecting vowel. So we have alpha is the contract vowel, plus omicron connecting vowel leaves us with a fish plus a bomb, is a dead fish, omega. So we insert the omega, which then gets the circumflex uh, uh, accent, and then men, men in the middle, or I'm sorry, men, men in the middle, <laughs> that's different. Uh, men is first person plural, okay? So agapomen, we love. Agapate, agapate. So the connecting vowel here is epsilon because the second person uh, plural ending is um, ete, epsilon, tav, epsilon, okay? Which means it's not beginning with me, ni, or no ending. So we use the connecting vowel, epsilon. So alpha plus epsilon, a fish, Plus a crab is a really big fish. And then we tack on. Um, yeah, there is. There is. Uh, what is it? It's... Um, imas. With, a, with an ida instead of a epsilon. Uh, we went over that a few chapters back, uh, so it is in mounts if you want to look it up there, or you can um, look at, I think I covered it with the relative pronoun uh, portion, uh, but it's the personal pronoun. So you have um, both in singular and in plural. It is also based on word ending, so you have both. You have the word for we, which may be used, but it's not required. It's just like Spanish. Um, and then uh, the built-in uh, personal endings include the person. So this is just like, like Spanish. Um, you know, we have all these languages that have built-in person. Why doesn't English do that? I don't know. I don't know. English is... Uh, very difficult language I've come to find. So, um, and this is true for first person singular, second person singular, third person singular. This is true for first person plural, second person plural, or third person plural. All of these verbs have personal endings built in, or, or uh, personal, 
let's just call it built-in person. So if the word uh, um, you, which would be imas, uh, with an epsilon, is not there, you could still say simply agapate, and that still means you love. If the word imas is there, it adds emphasis. It really underscores you love. Okay? There's other ways to do emphasis as well, uh, but we'll get into that later. Um, but but um, that's, that's what's going on with, with the uh, personal endings. Agaposin, the connecting vowel is Omicron. Why? Because the personal ending starts with a ni even though it drops out. So it's originally ni, sigma, yoda, ni. Okay? And, and so that's why the Omicron is used. Then the ni drops out, and then the, um, the Omicron lengthens, or oblouts with a epsilon, I believe, is what it what it is. And um, wait, is that right? No, nah, I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right. I think it's simply uh, the knee drops out, and then the alpha and the omicron. I need to look this up. I think I might have it wrong here, but I think the alpha and the omicron simply just combine become omega. Um, let me look it up real quick. I'm second guessing myself. Last week I second guessed myself and then it was proven that I was right. I wish that were the case every time, but uh, I could be wrong here. So let me look it up to make sure I'm not getting it wrong. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Mm. This may not have it, but worth looking. Ah. No, he is saying it is alpha, omicron, epsilon, sigma, yoda. Um, and I think that's because the, um, the Omicron ends up, because the knee drops out, it does take epsilon, right? If we're looking at the third person plural present active indicative, uh, from chapter 16, you have li usin. Liusin, but the ending is ni sigma yoda. So uh, the omicron ends up compensating oblout with the epsilon. Okay. But what we learned in this chapter, and we saw it a few slides back, is when you get three vowels like that, the first two contract, and the last one might either fall off or subscript. So the, in this case, the epsilon drops off. I think this might be more helpful just to say that if you have alpha, omicron, ni, sigma, yoda, the ni drops out, and that leaves you with one or two vowels, and that's alpha, omicron, and they combine to omega. I think that's, that's just easier. But uh, according to Mounts, this is how he has it. Alpha, omicron, epsilon, and then the first two contract, and the last one drops off. But I digress. All right, let's look at some more. So the last one, agapao, was an alpha contract class. Now we're looking at pieo, pieo, epsilon contract class. Okay. Again, you're not going to see po in the dictionary in your lexicon. You're going to see pieo. But you're only going to see it there. You're not going to find that in the New Testament. Um, 
uh, P P E O. My mind is just just drawing a blank. What is this word? Um, no, my word. I can't remember. I know this. Let's see. I do. I make. I. I knew that. I. I was thinking of myself to do, and then I second guess myself. See, I should stop second guessing myself. All right. So P A O to do. I do. Um, in the first person singular, it's P O, P O. Now, if you were a Rasmian, you'd probably say pollo. This is not chicken, okay? <laughs> Spanish joke. Uh, P-O. The connecting vowel is omicron. Sorry, my wife is texting me. Hold on. So the connecting vowel in PO is Omicron. Why? Because there's no ending, right? We use Omicron when the beginning of the case, or not case ending, the personal ending. I keep saying case ending. It's a bad habit. When the personal ending is either nothing or begins with me or ni. So we use Omicron here. So epsilon is the connecting vowel, or I'm sorry, the um, contract, contract vowel plus Omicron connecting vowel. That gives us our rules. A crab, plus a bomb, is a dead fish. Wait, is that right? Is that what I said before? Hold on. Second guessing myself again. Now here I have ooh. Oh, that's right. Um, it's actually this last one at, uh, towards the bottom. Alpha, epsilon, omicron, plus omega is omega. Any of the, the fish or bomb plus a dead fish is a dead fish. I need to fix my slide. Glad I caught that. And it's for the same reason as before. It, it all, already lengthened. Oops. There we go. So a crab plus a dead fish is another dead fish. Okay? P-O. Second person singular, P-E-S. P-E-S. The connecting vowel here is epsilon because the personal ending does not begin with me or knee, and it's not blank. Okay, so that leaves us with a contraction of epsilon, but that's the contract vowel, plus the connecting vowel epsilon, plus the yoda in the ending. Okay, so we learned before that when the diphthong is preceded by the same vowel, then that contract vowel simply drops out. Okay, that first one just poof, gone, and that leaves us with the diphthong from the connecting vowel and the vowel that's in the personal ending. Then we have PE, PE, physical education, to do. You'll never look at PE the same way. You gotta go out to do something. Uh, it, the connecting vowel, epsilon, because the personal ending is not in me, ni, or no ending, so that leaves us with the contract epsilon, the connecting vowel epsilon, and the yoda in the personal ending. Again, when we have the three vowels like that, where the first one matches the, f the beginning of the diphthong, the contract vowel just drops out. Poof, gone. And we're left with epsilon yoda. Okay? The first person plural, piumen. Piumen. If this were Ar Erasmian, you'd say poyu. Poyumen, poyumen, uh, but I don't, I don't use Erasmian pronunciation. So uh, this is the connecting vowel Omicron because it, the personal ending begins with a me. 
So we're left with the contraction epsilon plus omicron, a crab plus a bomb is ooh, what a mess. How are we doing so far? We good? Let me know if you need me to slow down or go back. P-E-T, P-E-T. Here we have the connecting vowel epsilon because the personal ending is ete. It does not begin with mini or nothing, so that's a contraction of epsilon plus epsilon. So a crab plus a crab is a one of the crabs is going to get stuck on the hook epsilon yoda then we have piusin piusin so the connecting vowel is omicron because of the knee even though the knee drops out then we have oblaut comp compensation with an epsilon epsilon plus omicron those will contract so a crab Plus a bomb is, ooh, what a mess. And then the second epsilon drops off. Now, that, what we were just looking at, P-E-O, was an epsilon class contraction. Now we're looking at Omicron class, Pli-ro-o. Pli okay, again, you're only going to see that in the lexicon, you're not going to find it in the New Testament. Because in the New Testament, it will follow the contract rules. Okay? So the first person singular in the New Testament would be plero. Plero. Again, connecting vowel is omicron. It lengthens to omega. So then we're left with a bomb plus a dead fish is another dead fish. Then... Uh, Yeah, P-E-O is I do. So uh, when it's contracted, it would be P-O, I do. Pli-ro-o is I fill or I fulfill. Uh, so the first person singular is pli-ro. Now, uh, pli reese second person singular. The contract is Omicron. The connecting vowel is epsilon because the personal ending is not in me, ni, or no ending. So we're left with a bomb plus a crab is e. I don't think I had this one up because uh, the, the order does matter. So a, um, I, don't, I don't know if I have a good... Oh, you could say a bomb plus a crab is oi they. <laughs> I like that. Oi, they. Oi. E. The only problem with that is it, it mixes Erasmian with, uh, with what we're learning. And I really don't like Erasmian, so I don't know how I feel about it. But for now, it'll do. So Omicron plus Epsilon is E. And then uh, the second person singular does end in a sigma, so you tack on that final sigma on the end. And then the third person singular is the same. Oh, am I, did I make a mistake here? I think I made a mistake, hold on. I think I'm missing right here. Totally am. Uh, let's see. Yep. Totally am. There we go. I wanted to think about it for a moment. Now this makes sense because we said that any combination Omicron, Epsilon, Yoda will simply end up being Omicron, Yoda. Sorry for the confusion. I botched that up, but I caught the error. As if that's a mulligan. Prize. So third person singular, pli re, pli re, excuse me, the connecting vowel is epsilon because there's no mini or no ending on the personal ending, right? So the contraction is omicron, 
plus the connecting vowel epsilon, plus the ending yoda, and they simply uh, contract to E, Omicron yoda. Then there's plerusin, same thing as before, the, the knee drops out, lengthens or oblouts due to the knee dropping out, so we get the epsilon on the end. So then we've got the contract Omicron, connecting Omicron, and the epsilon as the result of the oblout. And then it just simply, Omicron plus Omicron is ooh, what a mess, two bombs, ooh, what a mess, and the second epsilon just drops off. We are almost done. Um, Plirute, we got the connecting vowel epsilon because the ending is not in mini or no nothing. So Omicron plus epsilon is ooh, what a mess. A bomb plus a crab, ooh, what a mess. Uh, Plirumen, first person plural. Uh, the connecting vowel, Omicron, because of the me. We got a bomb plus a bomb. Ooh, ooh what a mess. Boom. And that's it. Woo! Contract verbs. I love the fish stuff. If you don't like it, just throw it away, discard it, don't use it, and come up with your own method. And that's fine. You need to, you need to use whatever mnemonic devices work for you, and, and that's quite all right. But I hope you found it helpful. Um, we will continue down the path of verbs. Uh, I think, let's see, what do we have next week? Present middle passive. Um, it's a slightly different form uh, to talk about, there's middle and then there's passive. We'll get into it then. Uh, but slightly different form from what we've learned. So there will be entirely new content, really, next week. So make sure you have a good foundation of the present active indicative and the contract present active indicative. Complete the workbook content, check your answers, um, and all the answers, if you haven't found it, it's on Bill Mount's website. Um, I think it's BillMounts.com. It used to be Technia.com or Technia.net or something like that, but I think he's changed his website. It's BillMounts.com. Um, and the nice thing is, there's no tests, there's no quizzes here, but you, if you're going to learn this material, you got to make sure you're reviewing. Do the practice, because the whole structure, the whole purpose is read first, review second, and practice third. Um, so make sure you're doing that and, um, stick around. We'll be back here next week on Friday. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that button, but then also hit the bell. So you get notifications, uh, when new content comes out or when I go live. And then if you want, you can always, uh, support if you feel so led it's, um, streamlabs.com slash phone of own one. The link is in the description below. Um, but not required. The whole purpose of this is to provide free resources and instruction so you can learn Greek without having to go to university and spend a lot of money. But um, subscribing is good support if you want to do that. Um, you don't have to give monetarily. Cool. I will see you next week. Stick around and watch the Greek word of the day. Continue to get those out so you can build on your vocabulary. And uh, we'll be back next week for our 10th lecture. And that means we're almost halfway done. It's roughly 25, 25 weeks, 27 weeks total. But only 22 of that is lecture based on the Bill Mounts material. And then the last five weeks will be translating First John and practicing what we've learned. So um, keep at it and uh, stay the course, all right? We'll see you later.